Welcome to Lecture Online. Now let's find the torsional constant for a circular cross section that has a hole in it that is hollow in the middle. So it would be a wire with a hollow core or a, a, a post or a um, cylindrical object that gets twisted that has an empty, empty region that is circular on the inside. So you can see we have an inner radius R1 and an outer radius R2 and the area elements, since it's a circle, we still can use dA is equal to R dr d theta. To find the torsional constant for this, we can do the following. We can say that the torsional constant J is equal to the torsional constant of the outside radius, let's call it R2, if we assume that there's no hollow section to it and subtract from that the torsional constant of the inner portion that is not really there, R1. So basically that's how we'll approach that. So that means we're going to have a set of double integrals. That would be equal to the double integral of the distance, we'll call it R squared times the A, and that would be for the R2 portion, for the whole circle, subtract from that the double integral of R squared the A. The only difference is that we have different limits of integration. For the r, that would be from 0 to r2, and from 0 to 2 pi for the angle, and here that would be from 0 to r1, and 0 to 2 pi for the angle. So they look exactly the same, the only difference is that they have different, different limits of integration. So that means that this would be equal to the double integral from 0 to r2, and from 0 to 2 pi of r squared times r dr d theta and then minus the double integral from 0 to r1 and from 0 to 2 pi of r squared times r times dr d theta. So all we have to do is do one of them. The second one will look exactly the same except instead of having limits of r2 we'll have limits of r1 which means that this is equal to, when we integrate the angle d theta, we get theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, and then we multiply that times the integral when we do the r cubed, we end up with r to the fourth over 4, evaluated from 0 to r2, and of course we get exactly the same for the other one, this would be equal to, theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi times r to the 4th over 4 evaluated from 0 to r1. So we get the exact same result but with r1 instead of r2. So what this ends up being, this is equal to 2 pi divided by 4, bring the 4 out, times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get r2 to the 4th, Subtract from that, here we get 2 pi divided by 4 times r sub 1 to the 4th power. And of course at that point you realize that you can factor out a 1 half pi, and so this becomes equal to 1 half times pi times the quantity r sub 2 to the 4th minus r sub 1 to the 4th, and that would be the torsion constant if we have a wire or a small rod or something like that that has a hollow portion with radius R1. And that's how it's done.